Admiral Arlie Burke and Dr. David Abshar founded the Center for Strategic and International Studies in 1962. Our first home was Georgetown University, but we soon outgrew our campus offices, moving to downtown Washington. When Dr. Abshar was called by President Nixon to serve as Assistant Secretary of State in 1970, Ambassador John Steeves became our president. With his business acumen, he invigorated our finances and moved the center to its current building on K Street. Admiral Burke persuaded Dr. Abshire to return to the center, further broadening the foundation for the global prestige the center enjoys today. With Abshire back at the helm, bipartisanship became a main focus for CSIS. Lending support for the concept of crossing the aisle, Senators Hubert Humphrey and William Brock hosted the first CSIS Quadrangular Conference on Trade, Energy, and Security. The center's reputation grew further when industrialists and environmentalists together hammered out a policy framework on coal, an effort that received special recognition in Fortune magazine. From there, we became really innovative, partnering with Hanna-Barbera cartoons to teach America's children about the energy crisis of the early 1970s. Fred, are you at that again? Yeah, I sure am. I found it, Wilma. Found what? I found the secret. I found the secret in these black rocks. With Dr. Abshar's vision, the center established its first endowed chairs, the Japan Chair, the Shoal Chair in International Business, and the Simon Chair in Political Economy. Today, CSIS has 10 chairs, thanks to supporters like Ramesh Wadwani. We also welcomed Henry Kissinger, Jim Schlesinger, and Zbig Brzezinski as the center's first counselors. Once again, our West Pointer, Dave Abshar, was called to public office, this time on President Reagan's team. He passed the baton to the center's chief operations officer, General Amos Joe Jordan, as our third president. During the late 80s, our revered chairwoman, Ambassador Ann Armstrong, expanded the center's international reach and continued to build our reputation for independence and bipartisanship. Under Ambassador Armstrong, we extended our reach in Asia, welcoming Hawaii's Pacific Forum to the center. 23 years later, Jim Kelly and Ralph Casa continued to bring together strong minds and visionary leaders from around the Pacific Rim. Senators Sam Nunn and Pete Domenici, relying on the wisdom of Dr. Charlie Sanders, brought into sharp focus the nation's fiscal challenges with the Strengthening of America Commission. In 1999, Ambassador Richard Fairbanks became the fourth president of CSIS. Building on the foundation laid by his predecessors, he kept CSIS on its course and speed during a time of transition. In the same year, Senator Nunn was elected chairman of the board. Drawing on his long and diversified career in leadership roles, he was eminently qualified to bring the center into the 21st century. After serving in the challenging position of Deputy Secretary of Defense, John Hamry assumed the presidency, marking the new millennium. In the last 10 years, Dr. Hamry has engineered a period of phenomenal growth at CSIS. Currently, we host more than 1,600 events each year. Every day, we welcome hundreds of visitors through our doors. All of these interactions enrich the dialogue in Washington and add up to a powerful impact on public policy at home and abroad. In the last decade, Dr. Absher and Kazuo Inamori founded a leadership academy to guide the coming generation of policymakers. 
Senator Bill Frist led a bipartisan task force on HIV AIDS with the generous support of Don and Katie Marin. Their projects helped inform the principles behind PEPFAR. Ambassadors George Argeros and Felix Royden helped modernize American diplomacy, working closely with Henrietta Holzman Four, then serving as Under Secretary of State. Linda and Mitch Hart helped give our bright young professionals a chance to learn directly from world leaders. General Jim Jones, at a critical juncture during the Iraq War, brought together a distinguished group of retired military under the auspices of CSIS to do an independent assessment of the battlefield situation and the future role of the Iraq Security Forces. Richard Armitage and Joseph Nye integrated our use of hard and soft power, launching the concept of smart power. Neville Isdell brought into sharper focus the challenge of the looming scarcity of our life-giving resource, water. Helene Gale helped improve America's global health strategy. Hank Greenberg, Senator Bill Cohen, and Carla Hills invigorated our commitment to Southeast Asia and ASEAN. Now we embark on a new era at CSIS and together we build on the last decade of remarkable progress. The Center will continue to go forward, shaping policy both at home and abroad, with the dynamic leadership of Dr. Hamry, the strength of our scholars and staff, and with the vision of our eminent Board of Trustees. As we move towards the half-century mark, CSIS is at the ready for a state-of-the-art headquarters. And now, welcome to 1616 Rhode Island Avenue. May I thank you, and from an old senator, over and out.